Dead soil. That's the silent killer in every struggling garden. You water, you fertilize, you pray for green, but the ground just lies there, dull and lifeless. What if I told you there's an ancient, almost forgotten recipe that wakes up that soil in a single night? A 200-year-old village method, born long before chemical fertilizers existed, that farmers still swear by today. And it costs almost nothing. In this video, we're unlocking the real folklore soil activator that turns dead dirt into living soil again. The Hidden Power Beneath the Soil Centuries ago, when farmers had no access to synthetic fertilizers, they relied on what they called living mash. It was a mixture of three simple materials, fermented grain mash, wood ash, and clay slurry. The combination worked like magic. The mash brought in beneficial microbes, the ash restored lost minerals, and the clay held it all in place. This wasn't superstition. It was science disguised as folklore. The villagers didn't know about microbial colonies or cation exchange capacity, but they knew when the soil came alive, crops followed. Modern gardeners can recreate that same transformation, safely, naturally, and for almost zero cost, using ingredients most of us already have around the house. Today, we'll show exactly how to do it, with precise measurements for a 10 square meter garden bed, and explain the science behind why it works so fast. Step 1. The Fermented Grain Mash, Feeding the Soil Life The heart of this recipe is the fermented grain mash. Think of it as a homemade probiotic for your soil. When grains, like rice, barley, corn, or even old breadcrumbs, ferment, they become packed with beneficial microbes that feed the life underground. These bacteria and yeasts kickstart decomposition, release enzymes, and convert locked up nutrients into forms your plants can use. To prepare it, you can use leftover grains, kitchen scraps, or spent brewery mash. Seal them in a bucket with a bit of water and a microbial starter, such as homemade bokashi, or simply a spoonful of yogurt to introduce lactic acid bacteria. Leave it to ferment in a warm corner for about a week until it smells pleasantly sour, not rotten. When it's ready, you'll have a powerful microbial concentrate, but before applying it to your garden, it must be diluted properly. Use a 1 to 500 ratio, meaning 20 milliliters of fermented mash per 10 liters of clean water. This dilution provides just the right microbial density without overwhelming the soil's balance. For our 10 square meter bed, those 10 liters of diluted drench are enough to evenly moisten and inoculate the top layer. Step 2. The Wood Ash Mineral Resurrection Next comes the secret mineral ingredient that ancient farmers knew could wake up even the most exhausted field-clean hardwood ash. When used correctly, wood ash provides a quick shot of potassium, calcium, and trace minerals that neutralize acidic soils and feed microbial growth. However, wood ash is highly alkaline, so it must be used in moderation. For a 10 square meter, about 108 square feet, garden bed, the ideal amount is 0.7 to 0.9 kilograms of pure hardwood ash, roughly 1.5 to 2 pounds. Sprinkle it evenly over the soil surface like dusting powdered sugar. Never pour it in piles. That can burn plant roots. Once spread, lightly rake or fork it into the top 5 centimeters of soil. If your garden already has a high pH or you grow acid-loving crops like blueberries or azaleas, skip the ash. For everyone else, this single step restores the balance of potassium and calcium, two nutrients that most worn-out soils desperately lack. Step 3 is the clay slurry, holding the magic together. The last part of this 200-year-old trio is the clay slurry. Now, while it might seem a bit strange to add clay to your soil, it's actually the secret ingredient that binds the whole recipe together. Clay particles hold onto nutrients and water way better than sand or organic matter alone. They kinda act like a natural storage system, catching and slowly releasing minerals and moisture to your plant roots. For a 10 square meter bed, you'll want to use 5 kilograms of fine river clay or powdered bentonite clay. Just mix it in a wheelbarrow with enough water to make a smooth, pourable slurry. You're aiming for something like a thick milkshake consistency, 
spread that evenly over the soil surface and work it into the top 8 to 10 centimeters of soil with a hoe or garden fork. This layer not only boosts moisture retention but also creates the perfect environment for the microbes from your fermented mash to multiply and thrive. Step 4 is bringing it all together. The soil activation. Now that your foundation is ready, it's time for the real transformation. With your ash and clay already mixed into the soil, take your prepared microbial drench. That's 10 liters of water mixed with 20 milliliters of fermented mash and pour it evenly over the garden bed. You'll need about 1 liter per square meter. This single step starts a chain reaction underground. Within just a few hours, the microbes begin breaking down organic material, releasing trapped nutrients, and waking up dormant life forms like earthworms and beneficial fungi. In one to three days, you'll notice the difference. The soil gets softer, darker, and it just smells alive. Within a week or two, plants start showing deeper color and faster growth. And for gardeners using solid bokashi instead of the liquid mash, just bury small handfuls one or two liters total across the bed. Before drenching, you'll want to allow a one to two week rest period before planting if you're working with fresh, still fermenting material. So, let's decode the overnight miracle. When you pour that fermented mash onto your soil, you're flooding it with lactic acid bacteria, yeasts, and enzymes. These tiny microbes feed on any leftover organic matter and multiply fast, releasing carbon dioxide and heat. Basically, you're creating a miniature compost ecosystem right under your crops. The wood ash? Well, it gives an instant nutrient and pH boost, unlocking minerals that were stuck in acidic soil. Meanwhile, the clay acts like a magnet, catching those nutrients and holding onto moisture so your plants can actually use them instead of losing them to runoff. In other words, this isn't magic. It's microbial engineering, a biological chain reaction that nature's been perfecting for centuries. The villagers might not have had microscopes, but they sure understood results. Their recipe didn't just fertilize, it brought the soil back to life. Now, every gardener should remember that moderation is really key here. Never use more than one kilogram of wood ash for every 10 square meters and always check your soil's pH before you reapply. If your soil's already on the alkaline side, just skip the ash and stick with the fermented mash. And if you're working with heavy clay soil, go ahead and cut the clay addition in half. That'll help you avoid compacting the ground. Keep your fermented drench fresh too. Don't store it for more than a few days, otherwise the microbes start losing their punch. Always use clean water for mixing and try to apply the mixture during the cooler parts of the day so you protect all that microbial life from UV damage. Within about 24 to 72 hours, you'll notice the soil feels softer and just a bit warmer. Within the week, earthworms start coming back and that good, earthy smell returns. After two or three weeks, you'll see plants putting out stronger stems, greener leaves, and just growing faster overall. The change is right there in front of you. It really feels like the garden is breathing again. This old recipe doesn't defy science. Honestly, it's science rediscovered. It's a simple biological boost that brings back something chemical fertilizers just can't touch. The living network beneath your feet. And there you have it. That's the entire secret. The exact 200-year-old village formula that can bring even dead soil back to life. Just remember those golden proportions. For every 10 square meters, use 0.7 to 0.9 kilograms of clean wood ash. 5 kilograms of clay, and a 1 to 500 fermented mash dilution. That's 20 milliliters to 10 liters of water. Apply it evenly, water it in, and then let nature take over. If this video helped you understand the true power of natural soil activation, make sure to hit that subscribe button and share it with every gardener you know who's struggling with lifeless soil. Let's bring back the living earth, one bed at a time. You're watching Soil and Crops Central, where old wisdom meets modern soil science.